Okay, 65 degrees outside, clear skies, and uh, I'm going to go up and see Kim Kovac, if I can find his number, and check on the week's special. He says he's got a lot done, sent me a couple of pictures, looks pretty exciting. Hey, what's happening? It looks pretty down here. I bet it's pretty up there. It is. It's gorgeous. Good, good, good. Well, I got the plane all fueled and everything. Um, and uh, so I'll be out here soon, probably get up there in an hour. I looked at the uh, airport kind of rules stuff. Basically stay south of the railroad track and west of the runway. Yep, exactly. Uh, good, okay. What I'll, what I'll probably do, there doesn't seem to be a lot of wind down here. Probably just land to the south, go to the end, and then follow that little path that you gave me to your house, which is kind of in the back corner there. That'll work. Okay, good deal. Super. Well, I'll, uh, I'll uh, you know, probably just make a pass over the, I'll just come in and make a downwind and land and come on in. I should be there in about an hour. Sounds good. And by the way, everybody likes low passes. Okay, good deal. Okay, super. Well, we'll do that. And, uh, and uh, hey, I'm bringing the header tank too. Oh, good. Cool. Thank you, Kurt. All right, we'll see you in a bit. Bye. All right, bye-bye. All right, cool. All right, here we go. Let's go off and see Kim Kovac and see what's going on with the week's special. I can't wait. Oh my God. I was telling Kim, I said, uh, I said that was probably one of the most proud accomplishments, one of the most proud accomplishments I ever did in my life because I basically dropped out of aeronautical engineering school. At, Purdue the beginning of my sophomore year so I had like no formal training and uh, then I went home I designed the airplane built it from scratch myself and went to my first world aerobatic championships in it made the US aerobatic team when I was 24 uh, I went to the first world aerobatic championships the next year I was 25 in Czechoslovakia 61 competitors 18 countries I got three silvers and a bronze and ended up second overall in the world. It was pretty cool. I mean, nobody knew who I was or anything. And on the way home, I was designing the weak solution on the airplane. So uh, we'll see. That'll, that's another story. This is where we're going in. That's my ride today. So here we go. It's all fueled. And uh, ready to rock and roll.
Bye. That's an interesting way to get to somebody's house. God damn. Fix this. All right, here we go. Hey, it's pretty warm up here. All the Sikorskis do that. I got three of them. They all get in and out the same way. Oh my God, okay. Well, I'm gonna get a little bit of, we got a big crowd here, so. Everybody's enjoying the, the deal here. So this is the Leeward Air Ranch, and as you can see, it's more set up for cars than it is airplanes. <laughs> that was pretty tight. I almost hit some guy's flagpole coming over here. Oh my God, but anyway. Pretty cool. Roll in the back of the airplane so man, what's been happening? Well, I scoped out the property before I, you came just yeah, to no, make no, sure that... No, uh, that worked out fine. I appreciate the, the heads up. I probably would have figured it out, but uh, yeah, why not? if nothing else, we would have been pushing the plane around. <laughs> well, we didn't want to do that. <laughs> Some places where some trees are pretty close, and, yeah. Uh, and usually we don't get things in here with 40 foot wingspan, huh. so so you it, know, it worked out okay. Yeah, I was here for a big fly in at Sun and Fun, it had to have been at least a decade and a half ago when the Warbird guys were you know really big down there, yep. And uh, you know, we all stayed out on a thing there, and you know, Jimmy had it was when Jimmy was still around, sure. was when Jimmy was still around sure and I uh, had a big you know hamburgers and all that kind of stuff yep. so but man I tell you what coming up from this way man it was like where is this place where is this place I knew I figured that you said stay I south of the railroad track uh -huh. and I thought well there's kind of a community there and right at the last minute I mean I, I saw the the grass strip it blends in west side of uh Lake Weir, uh -huh. and I was looking around. I thought, well, there's that restaurant over there, and you know, could oh, go land or whatever. Yep, but uh, yep. you know, anyway. So, well, cool. That's Joe Harry's airstrip over there. That's I think the one you were thinking. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Over I mean, it kind of looked like it went like that. Yeah, it, was, it does. Uh, <laughs> kind of tight. Yeah, it looked like a, like a, like you a. Yeah, chase at the land. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Well, you draw a crowd. Yeah, good, 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 good. Yeah. When was the last time you had a party at your place? <laughs> Awesome. Well, th I, I did bring some chalks, but thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, good. Okay. All right. Well, let's go check it out. Okay. Come on. Check it out. All right. Man, nice place. So, is your brother down in here? My brother's right there. Oh, That's no Kevin. way. I, you know, no, no. <laughs> I didn't Kevin. know that, Kevin. Oh, my God. Yeah. Super. And thank you for helping with the uh, the press, you know. Well, do you remember Dave Sharp? Dave Sharp. He's Dave? on 168th by your mom and grew up with you at Tamiami. Yeah, oh, my gosh. Uh, two years ago, you remembered me at Centerfine. You said, hi, Dave. Oh, See, now God. you don't remember me. Oh, my God. Tell me. I, don't, so I look in the people. mirror and I'm wondering hell who I'm I looking know. at. Well, this is pretty cool. That's your mom. That's my mom. Oh, awesome. And a caregiver. Good, good, good. Awesome. Looks like she's uh, contemplating some laps. Yeah. the yeah. Let me turn on the lights. Like a little spit special. Spit special. Yes, it's a pit. It's an S1S. S1S. Oh, my God. I tell you what, man, you get this special done, I'm probably gonna scare myself trying to find And everybody, you see that cool airplane right there? Isn't that a cool airplane? That's uh, the Ike deal, okay? Benny Goodman did that.
guess what? That's the one that I ended up with. And this is the guy that built it for, you know, he built it and I ended up with it. And then now he's got all sorts of projects I'm sending him to do. So pretty cool. Uh-oh, it looks like somebody backed into something. These are your wings. These are my wings. Those are your hurricane wings. Oh my God. You know, this was one tail slide that I took just <laughs> a little too far. <laughs> Oh. Those are the short hurricane wings. Those are the lower wings right there, and there's the upper wing right there. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, see, when I originally did the first set of wings, so is this the. the that's the, the long one. That's right the there. long one, okay. So when I first built the airplane, this was the original wing, okay? And I put about, I don't know how much time on this one, but I put a bunch of time on it, and. Uh, you know, basically made the U.S. Aerobatic team in that airplane. And this was the same span as a Pitt Special, which I believe is 17 feet, six inches, okay? And then what happened was, when I made the team, I made this shorter set of wings, okay? And it was eight inches shorter on each side. So it was six, almost a foot and a half, uh, you know, shorter than, than a, a stock Pitt Special, okay? And so, you know, those, these, the, the short wings are the ones that I flew in Czechoslovakia. And I got, like I said, I got uh, three silvers and a bronze and a second overall in the world. And um, anyway, it was a great, great time. Thank you for saving all the fabric. Mm -hmm. That's my roadmap for putting it back on. You know, in reality, I know, I know you did a lot of, you know, checking into all this kind of stuff here. We'll, we'll make a decision as to what we really want to put on there. Okay. Okay. Because, and I know there's, I know we got the two canopy things, and I think what I realized was, that's all here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, we'll go take a peek. Sure. Oh, my God. Yeah, so the, uh, the short wings were what were on the airplane. When the uh, when the hurricane hit, the week special didn't do too bad, but oh my God, the week's solution was a disaster. So this was the original canopy. I think what we'll do is maybe probably just leave it like that, you know. And you know, I think later and. I'd have to go back and look at the history, but I may have put, I can't remember, this is the way I flew in Czechoslovakia, I know that. And then I got the solution going for the 1980 World Championships, and we were having an oil pressure problem with it, and at the end I literally dusted off the week special two weeks before the World Championship, and I had my Bill Rose fly it up to Oshkosh, yeah. and I flew the P-51 up there, and we practiced out of Nielsville, Wisconsin. And, uh, you know, what happened was, um, I can't remember by then if I had put on, I'll have to go back and look at pictures, if I had put on the uh, canopy. And this is the youngest man on the United States team getting ready to go in the air, 26-year-old Kermit Weeks from Miami, Florida. Now we watch Kermit in the air going through his maneuvers. On the uh, canopy, the normal pits canopy. There's that one right there. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay, so that's the normal pits canopy. So what I think where, where I'm leading to go is to basically, I still wanna, I still wanna honor Linda's deal. So we'll leave this as is. Okay. So what I would suggest is just to make me a whole new canopy and we'll put 
the, we'll put the sliding one back on. All right. Okay. And then we'll we'll save that, you know, just to honor Linda because Linda flew it. She won medals on it. You know, she did a great job. Sounds good. It would probably be easier to make it new than to restore that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it, things go that way. Well, you know, the other thing too is, I mean, if this thing's kind of dinged up or, or whatever, if, if it's not that much, maybe we leave this and just let's get a new canopy. Well, I got to tell you, the tracks alone yeah. are well over a $1,000 now. You're kidding. No. No. Man. Yeah. Yeah, they're well over a $1,000. Just for the tracks. You're kidding. Uh -uh. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, so here's my old wheel pants. Yep. And l let me, yeah, so the, so I had, I had the short 505s on here. Oh my God, and this is the, this is the landing gear, the landing gear. that Kim found on a special website of biplane enthusiasts. He found a deal where somebody sent him the damn drawing, my drawing, yeah. okay? Yep. Oh my God, that's pretty cool. So- Are you talking about the lamp tires? Yeah, so these are still 505s, but they're the short ones. Uh-huh. Yeah, but we can still just put the big ones on. Okay. Yeah, well- Be better on grass. I, no, on my runway, I got. I have to. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah, there, there's no way. I mean, this was basically for, I was trying to save, you know, aerodynamics and speed and, you know, and that kind of stuff but I was flying off of asphalt all the time. And if I'm gonna be flying this out of fantasy of flight, I'm gonna to have to put the, the fatter wheels. Sure. The, the, the wheels I'm talking about are the same, they're still 505s, but instead of being this thin, they're like this, uh -huh. you know? So that's basically what we'll put on there. Okay, yeah. good to know. Cool, and, then, and they still should fit the wheel pants, because I think that was. I think regular 505s fit those, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I don't know why something like that never got painted. That must have been something that was a... That was an add-on later. Yeah. I'm pretty sure of that. It looks like an add-on. Yeah. And I uh, mean, that's all scratched up and stuff. I'd just keep the cowl and make a new one. I mean, it's bent right here. Yeah. You know, you might be able to save that, but maybe not. Just make, I mean, she, when Kermit was building this, it was about get it out the door production. Yeah. You know, I, you know, mine was, uh, uh, what's the expression? You know, form, art, or whatever. What, what's that expression? Form following function. Yeah, function. <laughs> Kermit was function. He's art. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. It's the workmanship he's doing is awesome. So, and like, you know, all this, hell, I didn't know how the hell to make a fiberglass cow. I just, I got up there and I, and I put a piece of plywood down there and I started, uh, look at this piece right here. Look at the bends in that. Look at that. It's all one piece. It's perfect. You're kidding. No, it's all one piece. Yeah. Well, what I did is I got my diamond tank on. I went down about a hundred feet. I came up and that's how I got the bends. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Oh my God. Okay, well, we'll try and save that one. We're yeah. It's in good shape, too. Oh my God. No, but I mean, literally, I mean, you got to realize, I mean, I built my damn airplane when I was in high school, and I thought, okay, I got to make a fiberglass cow. And you know, most people, I mean, they make like a female mold or something. And what I did is I just sat there and I put a piece of plywood, I put a bunch of foam there, and I carved it all up and blah, 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 and I threw the fiberglass on there and sanded it. And I used just a male plug, not uh -huh. a female plug, you know? So, so you know, th so it's probably maybe thicker and heavier than it should be. And then after I got all the shade done, I just went back and I started laying stuff in. I guess there's a tube in there or something. There is a tube. You know, in the fiberglass. It up. A little cooler goes right there. That's the inlet for the, for the deal. Interesting, and if you look at it, you see how, like, there's the center line, and this is a little bit offset. Well, what I had done was, because the prop spins, how does that go? Yeah, spins this way, okay? There's, there's a corkscrew effect of the air, so in actuality, at the front here, instead of this thing sticking straight out, it's cocked over, so the air goes more directly into the deal. I mean, I never, I dropped out of aeronautical engineering school, okay? I, this just seems so simple 
and obvious to me. And you know, I mean, you know, I was the first guy to put symmetrical ailerons on these things, and uh, you know, everybody. Yeah, see, so the original pits. Have you got the real pit swings here? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah, but they're they're like the freeze. But they don't have ailerons on them. Oh, yet. they don't have the ailerons on. Yeah, them. But, but anyway, they're going to be symmetrical anyway. Yeah. Oh, they're all going to be yeah. symmetrical. Yeah. Yeah. So I was the first guy to do this, and it was interesting too because later, um, these actually, yeah, because this was the original one, but the later one when I went to the, the other ones here, I made these slightly fatter in this part right here and I learned how to do something that was pretty cool what I used to do I would take a piece of three inch duct tape okay and I'd lay it out you know the length of the aileron okay I put it upside down I'd take a three quarter inch piece of masking tape and I'd put it down the middle so I had basically you know here's the tape three inch tape and then there was a three inch piece of of uh, masking tape down there. Then what I would do is I would tape this here and I would pull this down here. Yeah, you can see, see there is a front there. So see one's over, you see how it pops up a little oh, bit? Yeah. It's not totally symmetrical, but it was even more so on this one. But what happened was, because the air flows over this way, when it pops up, it creates more lift, okay? So when I taped it like that, because there's a gap here, obviously, there's a gap here, and by taping it, there was no airflow that could go through there anymore, mm -hmm. okay? And what I did was, when I laid this down right here, I would wrap the sticky part of the tape just over here so it would like stick down. So what would happen was, and the aileron wasn't this tight, I don't think, on my short wings, but when it was this way, it was totally smooth and flat. But when I went back this way and I closed it, when it went back this way, it would actually go back in the well by the way that I taped it. I see. It was my special taping technique. And with a stock pit, with this uh, span wing, it was 180 degrees a second was the roll rate. Mm -hmm. and, and what I did, I don't know how Curtis did it, but what I did is I would hit the stopwatch, do three rolls, or you know, hit the stopwatch when I started rolling and divide by three. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 180 times three was what I would get in, th in three seconds. And when I got with these wings here, with the way I had them all taped on stuff, that I went from 180 to 270 a second. Yeah. You know, and I mean, you know, back in the days when I when I pulled up for my four minute, which I think I got I got a silver medal in, in Czechoslovakia in this first world championship ever. I mean, the guys, the Russians were pulling up in their Sukhois, and they maybe could get a roll and a half. Okay. Those lens could roll faster than crap, but they were short, and they could do like a roll, or a roll and a quarter, maybe a roll and a half, you know, the Sukhois were about the same way. I pulled up in this airplane. I don't want to tell you how fast I was going. <laughs> don't tell anybody. Oh my God, I did, I pulled up and did five and a half vertical rolls. And then I did a hammer hit. I did two four point eight point two four point rolls coming down, pull out three hundred feet. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah. So, yeah. So, not in this air, not in this set of wings, but in this set of wings. And I got a hundred hour out of these wings. Uh, and I flew the world championship in Czechoslovakia. Uh, came home. Uh, the Nationals was coming up, so cleaned up the airplane, you know, probably a month, a couple of weeks later. Uh, come up to Keystone, uh, flying out of Miami, so I came up to Keystone here in Florida, just north of us. And uh, I was practicing the red line on a Pitts S1S on these wings. I didn't have any stronger structure, okay, is 202 miles an hour, okay. Guess how fast I was going when I pulled up to do five and a half vertical rolls? 240, and I'm still here. <laughs> God damn. Oh my God.
Oh my God, my freaking angel friends were taking care of me big time. Oh my God, well this is awesome. So, yeah, so, God, you know, the, those, those weren't, oh, because the bottom ones were so. The bottom ones were really bad. One was, one was not savable. Yeah. Okay, and, so, and, and the see this how, one, even this one, if you look at it, there's a, a, a twist. See the twist in the wing? I mean, it's permanently set into the wing. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, would, it would rig out if you stuck the struts. Really? I don't know. Look at it. No, I, I don't really see it. Oh, boy. Huh. Huh. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, I mean, I was trying to save weight. Oh, my God. You know when they'd say quarter-inch deals? Well, you know, some people go on the fat side of quarter-inch, and mm -hmm. Kermit would go on the thin side of quarter-inch. And this was pretty cool. A, a, normal, a normal set of pit swings built at the factory like this, okay? Not covered with the ailerons. Uh, all the rigging, and then I'm not including eye struts or flying wires, landing wires, or anything. But basically, just like this, with the ailerons, but not covered. And then the same thing for the bottom wings. I think a normal set of pit swings from the factory is about 115 pounds, which is light as shit. It's light as shit. These wings that I was flying down there were 89 pounds. Well, you had a lot of lightning <laughs> techniques that I've discovered in yeah. these wings, oh that's God. for sure. Yeah, we don't need to do them on your set of wings. Well, we already did. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, well, let's go look at them. Let's see what we got here. See what we got. 